All right, welcome. If you're here from the other video, thanks for coming over to check this one out. So this is a 2003 Polaris Trailblazer 250. It's a two stroke. We're gonna be cleaning the carburetor, but before we do that, I'll just kind of go through. So we got to pull this air box lid off. Filter's pretty dirty too. We're gonna have to clean that. So I'm gonna take this whole air box out and you can see the carburetor down there. We'll take that clamp off and the front clamp off and then pull the whole assembly out. So I'm gonna go to time-lapse and then we'll be back once we head out on the... So we've got the carburetor pulled off. It's right here, as you can see, the outside is already pretty dirty. I power washed this whole bike before we took it apart, but sometimes you miss. So first thing we're gonna do with this is clean it up. Um, but before then, I just kind of wanted to go over what I usually do before I actually start working. So one thing I've been doing lately, I started wearing nitrile gloves when I am using any type of solvent or anything like that. Just good to, to not let that stuff contact your skin. Um, Another thing that I have always done is print off the parts diagram. As you guys can see, there's the carburetor and it breaks it down into all the individual components. So I'm gonna link that in the description since this is a Polaris, you can't get the stuff on Motosport. I pulled this off babbitts.com. It's also good that way if you drop something or something's missing, you can circle it on here, which is why I have this pencil here, to tell you what what you're missing and uh, you can make a note to order it. Something else that's very important, um, you can pick these up at Napa. It's a, excuse my, forge tip cleaning kit. Um, these are very, very good. They have little ridges on them. They're meant for cleaning out the inside of an oxy fuel torch. Um, very good for cleaning out carburetor jets. So. We're gonna clean this up. We'll be back and we'll start with disassembly. All right, so we got this pretty well cleaned up on the outside. Some of that stuff is just staining. So I'm gonna go to the tripod and we will start disassembly. All right, I'm gonna start by removing just this center from the carburetor bowl here. Should be an O-ring or something on there, yep. We're gonna set that over here and then next we're gonna take out these four bowl screws there. Phillips head. You wanna be careful with these. Sometimes they'll strip out so it's good to just, if it feels like it's gonna strip, grab vice grips and uh, loosen them that way. Those should come out now. Those are all out, I'm gonna put them all over here. And you can take the bowl off, sometimes you just have to tap it. This one's stuck pretty good. There we go. All right, so the bowl's off. The floats on the Polaris's are, are built into the bowl, actually. So you can see them both in there, they're both moving pretty freely. Pretty cool design. So we'll leave those in there and then we'll just clean the bowl as it sits. So this is, you know, normally your floats are connected to this centerpiece here, but this is kind of a unique design to a Polaris. So we wanna make sure we keep this gasket here, this bowl gasket in good shape because I didn't order a carburetor rebuild kit for this. Um, I knew it wasn't gonna be that dirty, so I just 
kind of wanted to go through it, make sure all the jets were clean, and uh, fully disassemble it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out some of the jets. So for those of you that don't know which jet is which, you can look at this diagram here that we referenced earlier. So your pilot jet is going to be item 14, which is going to be the shorter one. So we'll take that one out first. Probably will need a precision screwdriver to get down in there. I don't have one out here. I might have to run over to the shed, but we'll take out the main jet then. There's a washer on that. So that's out. We'll set that over here. And then this should fall out or it might need tapped out. Or maybe it doesn't come out. Oh, it doesn't come out. No, sorry. Okay, so now we'll take out this. We're going to call it a float hanger. And we'll take out the float needle as well. need something small to push this float pin out also pay special attention this is directional so this little this little L bracket there the carburetor is like this it that's what keeps it from that's how you adjust your float so make sure that it goes back that exactly that way so you can see here that this side pushes out because there's a flat right there so I might have to get a little drift or something to drive that out I'll try and just tap with the screwdriver first and see where that gets us it worked okay so that'll come out like that and then this whole bracket and we'll just leave the float needle on it you can see there's your float needle it actually looks pretty good can't see any real varnish built up so we'll set it over here just like that we'll set the pin over there with it then you want to look at your needle seat that's where your needle rides down in there if you can focus the camera you can see pretty well Look for debris in there. This is this is pretty clean. The next thing we'll do will be we'll take out this idle screw. So what I always do with any screw is treat it as an adjustment, which it is. I'll thread it all the way in and then I'll count how many turns it goes in. That way when I go to reassemble it, I know exactly that. So we'll go in with this one. It's good to have a little mark on there. Um, I'll use a pencil mark for now, especially on this because you can't count flats. There we go. Oh, there's right about a half a turn from all the way in. So we'll take this out. Look, it should. Yeah, there's a little bit of buildup on there. Nothing too bad. So we'll take out our air screw now. now. This one is very critical to measure how many turns in it is. All right. So starting here, we'll go a half, one. So it's one turn from fully seated. So now we're going to back this out. Should be an O-ring on here and a spring usually. Okay, it looks like there is an O-ring. It stayed in there, but there's a spring. We'll set that over here. And I'll try and get that pilot jet out of there. I might have to pause and go get a precision screwdriver. 
All right, I did have to go get a precision screwdriver set here. Uh, it's a 3.8 millimeter. If you have this same set, it's probably from Harbor Freight. So we'll take this pilot jet out. There it is. So it's it's got some dirt in it, um, which would make sense. This thing was running fair. Uh, it wasn't running the greatest, so that, that's why we're here. Now I'm just going to look through this carburetor and just kind of look for look for any junk. Uh, you can take this needle seat out. I'm not going to because it looks very clean. So what we'll do next, we'll take this pilot jet and we'll take our torch tip cleaner that I must have misplaced. Here it is. And we'll take, I'll just start with the finest one and just kind of work through there. Work through that hole, kind of clear it up, and then I'll work my way up until it, until it's snug. That might have been too big. There we go. So we're cleaning some stuff out of there. Uh, it doesn't take much. I mean, these holes are are pretty small so any dirt or debris that makes it through your fuel filter it's probably gonna wind up clogging up one of these little guys somehow I was around the Torch tip cleaner through them first, then I blow them out with carburetor cleaner, and then I blow it out with compressed air. So we're going to do the same thing to this main jet, work through it with the torch tip cleaner. We'll probably uh, wire brush these two on the out, outer diameter just to, just to clean up. There's a little bit of oxidation on here, there's not much, but we're here, we might as well do it right. I'm just going to do a quick inspection of these floats and make sure that they're both moving freely. If you had to remove these, or if you wanted to, if they were stuck, it looks like you just pull this little top ring off and, and, it, and they'll come out. I'm not going to because they're moving freely. I will spray this out with carbon. Okay, we got everything cleaned up the way we want it. We're going to start with reassembly. Just kind of work in any, any way that we're able to. So I'm going to start by putting the air needle in. Well, I just had it. Here it is. So we'll put that in. And remember, this was just one turn from fully seated. So we'll screw this in all the way. And it's just fully seated. It doesn't have to be extremely all full send tight that's fully seated in my opinion right there so we'll go out a half and then one then we'll go with our idle screw which was a half turn from fully seated Thought I'd drop something there, but okay. Same thing. We'll just kind of watch. That's about a half a turn. All 
All right. Now I'm going to put the pilot jet in. This was the one we needed the precision screwdriver for. That goes right down in that hole. Drop it in there. There's no counting turns on these. Tight is tight. So just kind of let it find itself. Otherwise, you'll strip them and you'll be in a bind. That's tight. Now we'll put our main jet in, which has the brass washer on it, just like that. That goes in there. Just snug. Doesn't have to be a, a competition on how tight you get this stuff. That's tight. Now it's time to put our, I guess we'll call it a float bracket, right? Put this deal back in here. Like so. We'll run our pin back through. If we can. If it goes easier one way, that's the way it goes. It goes this way. Alright, and if you notice that gap there, we have to drive that in. So, luckily I have this hammer right here. I'll just use that. Very cool. And if you notice that L bracket we talked about, it's in the right spot because it limits the floats travel. Super cool. We'll just check and make sure our gasket seating surface is, is in good shape. It appears to be, so we're, we're good to navigate this float on there. So this, I believe... Yep, it fits just right like that. So just kind of, you can, if it if it binds up, something's wrong. So we'll put our bowl screws back in there. And if you get to this point and you have extra parts, stop. <laughs> the only thing you should have left is this. So we'll tighten all this stuff up and we'll put it back on the bike. Something else that is important to note that I didn't make mention of is how the fuel lines, vent hoses, and cables are routed. So this is your throttle cable here. It comes in the top of your carburetor to your slide. This is your choke cable. So it, it comes over here right on this side. Then this, I believe, goes down to your oil injection pump for to allow you, you know, these, these have a separate injection pump for oil because it's a two stroke, then you don't have to mix oil and gas. Um, hi kitty, are you checking us out? Get down. These are both vent hoses here. So these just go overboard. One of them has a little vacuum diaphragm on it. You just put it so that it can blow out this way, but it can't suck into the carburetor. Your fuel line goes right here. There's a smaller line up, up here where my finger is. I might need to get a flashlight to show. Um, let's see. Yeah, you can see it right there where my finger is. I believe that's an oil in line. And uh, other than that, that's how it sits in there. Okay, moment of truth. We got everything put back together here i made sure the gas is on turn the key on let's see if it starts all right perfect i can't believe it even runs without all these spare parts <laughs> that's something else all right thanks for watching guys tune in i'll be posting similar videos to this uh, in the weeks to come thanks